In today's video we're going to be making the final part for our little model train and it's going to be called the cow catcher, otherwise known as the bull bar. And this bit sits at the front of the train and basically knocks anything off the tracks that's in the way of the train. Got a few pegs there that will help us attach it to the train body. It's also hollow inside so we'll shell that out shortly. It's got a nice little pattern there as well on the front. So that's what our cow catcher looks like. Let's get started by going up to our file menu and selecting new. From new we'll click a metric template and make a standard millimeter part. Click create. Start with a 2D sketch and I want you to do it on the base plane, so the XZ plane today. And I want you to swing this little top section right around so it's sitting upside down. Okay, just move it off to the side a little bit. Um, we're going to use our line tool to draw the first shape today. Now today's shape is going to look a little bit like a house. Okay, and it's got very specific dimensions as well. So make sure you get the dimensions spot on. Otherwise you're going to have some issues uh, making this shape 3D a little bit later on. So starting from our origin, right in the intersection there, click once. Start moving to the right and I want you to type in 45.72. told you we're using specific dimensions today, so get that spot on. 45.72, press enter. Then come up, so we're going now at a 90 degree angle, 6.35 millimeters. We'll zoom in a bit here so you can see this. Okay, so I've come up 6.35 mil at 90 degrees and I'll press enter again, press escape. Grabbing my line tool once again, I'm going to go back to the origin, click once, come straight up at 90 degrees again, 6.35 millimeters, and press enter, and then press escape. You should now, if I select them, have three lines drawn. One, two, and three. What we're going to do now, as I said before, we're making a kind of house shape. We're going to do the roof on the house. So a bit of a triangle shape. We'll do that by using a point first of all. With the point tool selected, come down and hover around the center of your bottom line. You'll see the little green circle appear when you're on the center. When you start dragging up, you'll see a dashed line or a guide follow your mouse, just to show you that you're still on that center point. Somewhere up a bit higher, just click your mouse once. It doesn't matter where, because we're going to dimension it in just a moment. And just put that point in. Once that point is in, we can dimension it now and get these shapes um, to the right size. So click on that point once. Click on the bottom left-hand point once. Come out to the side for me and dimension it to 25.4 millimeters and press Enter. Okay, you're now ready to draw the rest of your shape. So grab the line tool and play a bit of game, uh, play a game of join the dots. So we'll start here on this dot here, the green one, come up to the point, make sure it goes green and click it, and come down to this point on the right side, wait till it goes green and then click it again. Press escape when you're done and you've got your little house shape drawn. Make sure those dimensions are spot on, otherwise you will have issues. Finish the sketch. That just swings it around and you can see that lying flat on our base plane. Next thing we're going to do is draw this shape again, but just a little bit smaller. Okay, and we're going to offset it from this plane as well. So I want you to go up to the plane tab in your ribbon and choose offset from plane. Now that you've chosen that, go over to your origin folder in your browser here and choose the plane we drew on originally, which was the XZ plane. Once you've selected it, it's going to ask you for a size. So how far do you want to offset this plane? Choose 19 millimeters and press the green tick. And you've now got a new plane drawn, as you can see, 19 millimeters higher than our original drawing or our original plane. Okay, and we're going to sketch onto this plane now. So start forming a new 2D sketch and to click on this plane, you've actually got to hover around the edges and it will highlight like that. That's when you know you can click on it and you can start drawing on this plane. Now remember, go over to your little cube here and just flip it around so we get the house shape up the right way. And before we start drawing today, I'm just going to hold shift and use my scroll wheel on my mouse just to turn it a little bit so I can see it in 3D for a moment. Because what I'm going to do is project some of the geometry from our original shape up onto this new plane. So I'm going to click Project Geometry and simply click click this bottom line. And you watch when I click it, a yellow line is going to appear up on my new plane. So you ready? I'll click it now. And you can see this yellow line just appeared. That's what I'm after. 
Press Escape to turn off the project geometry. Go back to your cube and press Top. And you can see now I've got this yellow line running across the bottom of this plane. Okay, that's all good. Using our line tool, we're going to draw um, a similar shape, just a bit smaller this time. When you draw this line down the bottom, don't start in the center because we don't want to constrain this line to that center point. Start off to the side somewhere, click and drag across. The size you want this line to be is 30.48 millimeters. Press enter. Once you've got that in, come up the right hand side, 6.35 mils. Press enter. Press escape. Grab your line tool one more time. Go back to your starting point and come up 6.35 mils again. Press enter. Press escape now. You've got that side bit drawn, the bottom bit, and this side bit drawn. Okay. Let's do a little bit of dimensioning very quickly. Um, so we're just going to grab this dimension tool. This corner here on our new shape, it needs to be from that corner there 7.62 mils. Okay, and that's going to basically center our shape. Um, next thing we're going to do is draw the point up here so you get like the roof on our smaller house. So grab your point tool again. Like we did in the first section, hover around the middle point of this bottom line until you see the green circle appear, then move straight up, follow the guide, and just click somewhere, doesn't matter where, up the top here. Dimensioning that now, so grab your dimension tool, click on that point, click on the baseline, move out to the side and give it a height of 19.05 and press enter. Alright, you can grab your line tool again now and play join the dots one more time. So starting over on the left side, wait till you see a little green circle. Click. Go up to your point and click. Come down to the right hand side and click on the green circle. Press escape when you're done and you should now have your smaller house drawn. Okay, that's all good. So finish that sketch and you can see now we've got two drawings on the same plane. They're just offset from one another. And what we're going to do is basically fill in the gap between those two shapes using the loft tool. So grab your loft tool. All you need to do is click on the base shape first. Click on the top shape, so the newer one you drew second. And click OK. And you've now got a pretty decent looking cow catcher. Alright, this orange plane that's still here, you can hide that simply by hovering around one of the corners and right clicking once it's highlighted. Turning the visibility off. Okay, and get a better view of your cow catcher now. Uh, I'm going to hollow it out first because that's really easy. So just swing it around to the bottom so you can see this section. And simply go up to the shell option in your ribbon. Change the thickness there to 2.5 millimeters and click on the base of the shape. That'll shell it out. So click OK. You've now got a hollow cow catcher. Okay, next thing we might do is we might put a design on this face and that face. Okay, so to do that, we're just going to have to start a new 2D sketch and click on this face. If you can't click on this face for some reason, it means you didn't get your dimensions right in the earlier uh, section of this video. So you'll have to go back and unfortunately start again and get those dimensions spot on. But if you can select the face, you must have done it right, so click on it. And all we're going to do now is click Project Geometry and click on this face. So pretty much on the top line here will allow us to select that face. When you move your mouse away, you should have yellow lines there showing that you selected that face. After that, we're going to go to this Offset tool. Click once and come down to this top line and make sure all four sides are selected and click. You'll see now when you move your mouse, you've got the same shape that you can make bigger or smaller. We want to make it smaller, so come inside the original shape and write in 2.5 mil and press Enter. So you want it looking something just like that. Finish the sketch. Extrude that new shape, so you might need to select it. At the moment you can see it's extruding out. I actually want it to cut back in on itself, so choose the cut option here. The distance needs to be 1.5 mil, and press OK. That's a nice little design. I like it so much, I'll do it a second time over here. So let's start another 2D sketch and do the exact same thing just on the other side. So once you've started your 2D sketch, remember to project your geometry first and just click on those four sides. They should all be selected in yellow. 
then go to offset click around that top line so all four sides are selected again and make it 2.5 mil smaller press enter finish your sketch choose extrude ensure it's 1.5 mil and it's cutting back in on itself click on that face click OK you've now got both sides looking pretty cool last thing to do now is to swing around the back of the shape and we're going to put three little pegs on here okay, and they're going to be the pegs that stick into the train body alrighty so what we're going to do is draw some circles first of all on this face so I'll just get that all leveled up and zoom in start a 2d sketch for me and click on this back face okay. using your circle tool I want you to draw three circles now when you go to draw these circles you'll see different guides or lines appear these white lines sometimes they turn up black if you hover over them for long enough don't draw on those otherwise your circles will, will be constrained to those lines we don't want that so make sure you're in a free space click once drag out a circle that's three mil and press enter come up towards the top somewhere remember in a free space click and drag three mil somewhere down the bottom right three mil circle okay so they're the three circles that we're going to be using now okay so you have to do a bit of constraining here to get these measurements all right so it's a little bit fiddly just bear with me grab your dimension tool at the top first thing we're going to do is get these two bottom circles three millimeters away from this bottom line so click on the center of that circle click on the baseline dimension the size to three mil do the same for the other sides click on the center of the circle click on the baseline come out to the side and make it three mil Okay, that's pretty straightforward next thing we're going to do is we're going to get this center point of the circle a certain distance away from that end point and it's going to be 7.36 press enter and we'll do the same for this one so click the center point of the circle click the corner of our shape there if it lets you come down 7.36 press enter now just to confirm that these circles are far enough apart from one another it should be 31 millimeters between that center point and that center point and it is so that shows we've got them in the right position now so just accept that constraint so those two bottom circles looking good they're in position okay now the next one at the top our center circle it needs to be 15 mil from that baseline so click on the center of that circle click on the baseline just pop out to the side make it 15 mil high and basically this center point and this center point they need to be 15.5 mils apart okay that should be the same for these two circles as well which it is so just accept that constraint so a little bit confusing there but hopefully you've got those three circles now in those positions okay you need them spot on so it's so that's going to connect to the train body properly finish that sketch for me I'm just going to turn this around on the side a little bit and I'm going to extrude those three circles now you want to extrude them three millimeters click on each of those circles so they pop out three mils that looks pretty good to me so click OK and finally just to help these attach to the train body a bit easier we're going to chamfer the edges of these circles in the chamfer button at the top there a little dialog box appears I want you to choose this second option down the distance needs to be 0.25 the angle stays as it is at 45 degrees now what we're going to do is start with this top peg and simply click on this top face now that doesn't do anything until you click now on the edge as well so when it highlights white click on that edge and it will chamfer that edge click apply come down and do the next face so click on the face of this bottom left peg then click on the edge and it will chamfer it just apply that effect come over to the last one click the face click the edge apply it and close that box let's go back to the home view it's not what I wanted but we have got now those three pegs looking pretty good okay, if I zoom in yep they look fine so the last thing to do now is just give our um, cow catcher a bit of color so at the top hit the appearance panel and I want you to click and drag over the top of it remember it's a wooden train so let's look for a type of wood 
Um, doesn't really matter what you pick here because you're going to change it anyway when you make your train. Oh, I'll just go with white oak, I think. Hit that little up arrow, and that applies that appearance to your cow catcher. So we're all done there. Make sure you save that up, and I'll see you in the final video where we will assemble our train.